James Charles just did an interview and you won't believe what he said. First off, he revealed that him and his brother have not spoken in over two years because of his allegations. Um, first thing that comes to mind is cell block A prison. <laughs> this person should be behind bars. James Charles addresses fans after new allegations he flirted with minors on social media. I tried more DMs of guys saying James texted me before too, and more screenshots and more messages. Over text, right? You don't know if I'm saying like, Oh my god, David, you're being annoying. Or like, oh my god, David, you're being annoying. Or like, oh my god, David, you're being annoying. And I couldn't understand why relationships were the one outlier. Why were they not working? Why was this area of me so different? And I'm like, well, we can't be together because you can't afford a plane ticket. You're probably still in either high school or college, like a senior in high school or in college, probably still in either high school or college, probably still in either high school or college, like a senior in high school or in college. And I finally, finally came to a conclusion. It sucks and it is ridiculously embarrassing to admit this. I'm not physically attracted to older guys, which sucks. Like I would date like the absolute youngest. I think I have to, and that is that I'm desperate. Hi sisters! Ah! My green drink matches my hair. Hello everybody, it is me, Salem, and welcome back to my Chanel. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are thriving. I hope that you guys are not stressed and that you guys are blessed and not overheating from the heat like I am right now. If you hear some noise in the background, it's because my AC is on in the other room. I literally feel like I am in the freaking Gerudo village in Legend of Zelda. This is the type of heat where you need to get on your knees and start praying to God to make sure that you about to go to heaven because the end of days is coming soon type of heat because this is not normal. It literally feels like I'm vlogging right now in the depths of hell, which would make perfect sense because today we're going to be talking about James Charles. Hi, sisters! Ah! This video is going to be about Jaime Carlitos, aka James Charles, and how apparently... Like, I'm sorry. I have something in my throat. So... <sighs> He really wants to just not be canceled anymore because he's just so innocent. You know, he hasn't done anything wrong. I'm not physically attracted to older guys, which sucks. Like I would date like the absolute youngest. He doesn't get as many views anymore. You know, like he's just suffering. He's just suffering and my heart really goes out to him you know he must be so poor right now i can only imagine is what i would say if i was lying to myself because i don't feel bad i say let it die let it die let it die let it shrivel up my patience has been non-existent lately so bear with me bear with me <gasps> bear 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 with me bear now you might have seen a couple of commentary YouTubers talk about the situation surrounding Mr. Charles. Mostly about how James Charles is literally delusional. He's so delusional that he genuinely believes that he is a professional singer out here. My brother in Christ, the only profession you have perfected is talking to minors. Because this has happened way too many damn times and he keeps blaming it on cancel culture when in reality it's just called you should probably be sorry and seek help. You know what I mean? If you're wondering why all of a sudden James Charles is coming back into the social media spotlight. I know that he's been irrelevant for years, but all of a sudden people are talking about him again in the commentary community. This is because Cosmopolitan came out with an article all about Mr. Charles called James Charles would like to be uncanceled, please. The summary of this article being more than two years after allegations of sexual impropriety sent the superstar, well, I wouldn't quite use superstar, I wouldn't do that, I wouldn't do all that. But anyways, let's continue. Sent the YouTuber into influencer purgatory. He's hoping to relaunch himself and his new brand with the help of a new makeup line. Oh, so that's why he wants to be uncancelled, so he can make more money off of y'all. In a wide-ranging interview with Cosmopolitan, Charles talks about effing up and trying to move on. What about your victims? Are they moving on? 
Anyways, this article's trash. There's a lot of victim blaming in this article. This article brushes over everything James Charles did and has done and has actually continued to do. This article is basically just trying to paint James as this saint who deserves all the empathy and sympathy. I checked his YouTube channel like yesterday and bruh shister is doing just fine with her views no one's mentioning nothing in the comments like it's absolutely crazy that in this article james actually talks about how he believes that he doesn't get as many opportunities as he did before the scandals and this is where i say the word delusional because it seems like his career was completely fine after all of the allegations but in his interview he insists that his life has been in complete shambles because apparently can Cancel culture won't let him go. But I am here to talk about how it's not right that, first of all, this situation is getting swept underneath the rug. Second, it has nothing to do with cancel culture. And third, yes, you actually did get away with everything, even though James insists that he didn't. And how there is literal proof that he has not learned his lesson at all. But before we get into the deep dissection and deep dive onto Mr. Charles, we do have a sponsorship for today's video. Look, guys, I gotta pay my bills and unfortunately, unlike James Charles, I do not live in a mansion, okay? Sis gotta make her coin somehow, so here's our today's sponsor. Have y'all been dying of this heat? Well, now y'all can feel fresh with HelloFresh. <laughs> with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Did you know HelloFresh offers more than just delicious dinners? It's now easier than ever to skip that extra grocery store running by adding snacks, sides, and more to your weekly order. Simply shop HelloFresh Market and take your pick from a curated selection of over 100 items. Don't call for delivery. It's always such a waste of time and money. Just think HelloFresh. They're fast and fresh and recipes are ready within just 15 minutes or less. If you guys have been following me close on my Instagram, you guys know that I'm currently on a health journey and I'm trying to eat better. And one of my favorite, favorite HelloFresh recipes that I always replicate is their apple kale salad. It is literally so addictive. I love it so much. It's fast, it's easy, and it always makes me feel really good after eating it. I highly recommend it. So go to hellofresh.com slash salamtovar50 and use code salamtovar50 for 50% off plus free shipping. That's hellofresh.com slash salamtovar50 and use code salamtovar50 for 50% off plus free shipping. For America's number one meal cat. All right, let's get into this mess. Part one. How did James Charles even become famous, and where did it all go wrong? James Charles Dickinson, born May 23, 1999, was born in Albany, New York. He first started testing the waters on YouTube by uploading covers of songs as well as singing tutorials on his very first channel, Jay's Coding. During this time, his interest in painting and drawing and makeup began to grow, and around 2015, he started to upload makeup tutorials on YouTube. As his makeup tutorials started to get a bit more attention, he then rose to fame in 2016 in one of his social media posts went completely viral, getting the attention of CoverGirl, which made him the first male ambassador for the makeup brand. This led to his videos becoming super viral on his account. James Charles then started to create meaningful connections with celebrities, singers, and actors alike, featuring them on his channel, appearing on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, Walking Los Angeles Fashion Week, and even Marco Marco. James Charles basically got launched into stardom. He has then released an eyeshadow palette and created a makeup line in collaboration with Morphe Cosmetics and has received numerous awards for his work on social media including two People's Choice Awards, three Streamy Awards, one Shorty Award, and one Teen Choice Award. However, his career has included multiple online controversies including a widely publicized feud with fellow beauty YouTuber Tati Westbrook in 2019. If you guys were on YouTube around this time, you guys know that, that the the Tati Westbrook, James Charles, Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star drama was also known as Dramageddon, where Tati Westbrook uploaded a video called By Sister, accusing Charles of disloyalty and attempting to seduce heterosexual men with the knowledge of the man's sexuality. And within this iconic video, this iconic meme came out of it. Like, it was just like, no big deal. Like, sucking fuck. Like, I'm just like, oh my god. Time and place. And you did it at my birthday dinner. 
and you did it at my birthday dinner. Tati Westbrook then retracted this video like I think like two years or one year afterwards saying that Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson manipulated her into making the video which is again drama get in that is like a whole nother video. <laughs> if you want it fully explained about that whole drama that was going around in YouTube circa 2019 this video is a really good video to watch if you're interested in that whole spiel. Because of that video being uploaded in 2020 there was then a landslide of allegations against Charles that went all the way up to 2021. Then in the next month in April 2021 Charles posted a 14 minute long video titled holding myself accountable in which he stated that he in fact did send sexually explicit messages to two different people both under the age of 18 though he denied knowing that they were underage at the time. Charles called his past behavior reckless and desperate stating to the guys involved in the situation i want to say i'm sorry i'm sorry that i flirted with you and i'm really sorry if i made you feel uncomfortable it is completely unacceptable later that month morphe released a statement stating they were cutting business ties with charles and youtube temporarily demonetized his channel he then returned to youtube with a video titled an open conversation around july 2021 and has since consistently uploaded regular makeup videos his career recovered pretty good i mean he still gets very good views he still gets a lot of opportunities he basically came out of the situation completely unharmed he was just perfectly fine but james feels very differently about the situation a week ago cosmopolitan made an article on james charles talking about how james feels like he is still always being canceled and that he wishes to be uncanceled and in this article not only does the author try to paint James as the victim when these allegations started to show up but James is also convinced that he's a victim with saying things in the article such as and I quote I see a lot of people saying oh my god nothing even happened to him he got away from this scot-free with no sort of repercussions that is so far from the truth it certainly wasn't an overnight thing where now I'm slaying again but he is trying hard the author writes and this is the part where James gets to talk about how badly cancel culture affected his career they were trying to get me to every single event and premiere and red carpet show and every single time they said no but then Charles started to make significant appearances such as the Grammys the Scream 6 movie premiere and young Hollywood night hosted by Vanity Fair and TikTok well that didn't last long it literally also says in this article that they visited him in his mansion like i will never understand why i should have sympathy for rich people i believe anyone from any status of life can go through really dark things i'm not trying to take away from that right at the end of the day he can afford therapy he can afford a life of luxury where he can just go and forget his troubles by just going to coachella or bali like again i can be a very understanding and sympathetic person but it's very hard to be sympathetic when your victims are constantly being gaslit and victim blamed even to this day this article being proof that it still happens and then james is just chilling still having brand deals still getting millions of views then james made it seem like he was victimized for such a long time but honestly all of this stuff was happening around 2021 2022 a year and a half or even two years is not that long for you to be going back to red carpets be being able to make a bunch of money again getting invited to premieres and red carpets like i don't i don't get it <laughs> like i don't see that being a really long time and in this article he talked about how i've already taken accountability i already said my apologies when this video where he supposedly is taking accountability hence the title taking accountability has actually been now deleted but i'm just not buying it just like i'm not gonna buy his damn eyeshadow palette that he's gonna come out with that he's so desperately trying to sell everyone by trying to clear his name through this article it's not gonna work sister i'm sorry it's gonna be a no for me it's a no from me dog Part 2. Cancel culture doesn't exist. It's literally just the consequences to your own actions. There is a huge difference between cancel culture and 
people asking you to take accountability you guys already know my opinion is that cancel culture just doesn't exist and i don't think it works at all but i know cancel culture to an extent i feel like more so effectively works on creators who don't have as much power as their other counterparts who have major fan bases who are constantly protecting them right or money to hire a pr team if an influencer or celebrity doesn't have those resources i do believe cancel culture is very effective but because cancel culture tends to only ever attempt to affect people who are larger creators or celebrities it kind of backfires i actually think it's incredibly ironic that the whole purpose of this article that was written was to bring a light to james charles about how basically he is this person who has been so deeply affected by cancel culture that there is now this irreversible damage to his reputation when the author themselves literally wrote in the beginning of this article how james facing all this backlash led to even more success and followers like make it make sense but we see this happen all the time with certain influencers who are really big they don't get canceled they get even bigger I know it is alleged that James Charles actually paid Cosmopolitan to make that article about him which I mean if it is true if I think that is a very not good attempt at clearing your name, let alone trying to promote a new product. Like, I just don't get it. I've talked about this so many times in my videos in the past that these influencers end up becoming even more famous and they actually get more opportunity. And good examples of that are people such as Logan Paul, who now has his own energy drink line. And clearly James wasn't as affected as he believes he was. His career basically bounced back pretty well cannot claim that you are a victim of cancel culture because literally nothing happens to you if everything was swept out from under your feet like you claim you actually wouldn't have a platform at all anymore your instagram would have been taken down your youtube would have been taken down but youtube was very merciful with you by only demonetizing your channel you're on tiktok if everything was swept from under your feet pretty sure you wouldn't be living in a mansion like if anything bro is thriving like i don't get it i think I think this article definitely backfired on James because he was doing fine. I think a lot of people actually did forget what he did. He has come back, is still making content, is on TikTok, he's doing his thing. And I think that if he released a palette, people actually wouldn't have been talking about this stuff. Them doing this article brought light to literally everything all over again. And by him trying to paint this narrative that his life is hard now, ever since he basically reaped the consequences to his own actions actions it makes it, it leaves a bad taste in everybody's mouth again this was not cancel culture this was people just wanting you to take accountability and even when you did try to take accountability that video no longer exists if you guys remember back in the day james had a series with his brother called brother and sister where they just talking or whatever and it definitely very much copied um uh, with katya and trixie and i remember back in the days there was a controversy about that too of them like copying um in the editing style but in the article it was stated that james's little brother ian no longer talks to him and that it's been a couple of years since they last talked here's the thing i believe money can buy happiness but money can't replace authentic genuine human relationships especially relationships that were once good it's like that would hurt me far more than losing a brand deal even in this article it seemed that james put a lot more emphasis on how he's sad over losing money than his relationship relationship with his brother which is crazy to me now that's not to say that he doesn't feel bad about losing that connection but that was only mentioned like once in the article everything else was about him saying that he was a victim of cancel culture and that he doesn't make money anymore and blah 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 it just really shows where his intentions and his heart is spoiler alert not in the right place and for him to claim that he's a victim of cancel culture despite him literally admitting that he did do this stuff such as talking to minors or sending sexually explicit images to minors there is literal video proof of him admitting this how can you be a victim to cancel culture when you literally did do the stuff that supposedly cancel culture is canceling you for not only that but the one clip that i feel like a lot of people forget that is out there but is never mentioned is a clip where he literally admits to liking younger men as well as a clip saying that he does in fact like straight guys and in his video where he does admit that he also followed it up by saying the excuse behind that was that he was desperate 
and I couldn't understand why relationships were the one outlier. Why were they not working? Why was this area of me so different? And I finally, finally came to a conclusion. It sucks and it is ridiculously embarrassing to admit this, but I think I have to, and that is that I'm desperate. Yeah, I don't know about that. In the video, he states multiple times, and he still does to this day, that he didn't know that the boys that he was talking to and flirting with um, were underage, but at the same time admits it, and then uses this to try to diminish the rightful concern people would have towards him doing that stuff with young people. It's giving very much, I'm not a groomer, hee <laughs> hee. I'm just a loser vibes you know which like i said earlier in this video if you are wondering how colleen ballinger and james charles are connected i'm about to tell you right now part three the trouble in paradise james charles can't form very good relationships I always find it weird when certain groups of people band together and they share common traits and I'm like, hmm, I wonder why. It's always been a red flag to me that James gets along with like very problematic people. He used to be friends with Jeffree Star, Shane Dawson, Colleen Ballinger, which you guys already know what's going on with her and her whole toxic gossip train. Well, it turns out that James Charles was a passenger since from a long time ago, from literally when Adam McIntyre came out with this video talking about how Colleen abused him and everything. James was the ringleader to sending so much hate towards Adam, defending Colleen, and are we surprised that both people have been accused of the same things? It's giving the apple doesn't fall that far from the tree. It's giving both of them are low-key guilty. Allegedly, allegedly, even though there's proof but I ain't trying to get sued. I don't got time for that and I don't got the money for that. Do I look like I make millions of dollars and live in a mansion? No, that's James Charles and Colleen, not me. Those are the types of people that the internet rewards, okay? They're your besties, not mine. James is someone who constantly admits to struggling with this repeated behavior of texting minors because he is desperate and cannot find love, apparently. So this brings me to my next section, which is Relationship 101 with Salem. That's my degree. And I actually took a class about relationships and marriage and dating in university, so I'm literally qualified to talk about this stuff but i want to talk to james james if you're watching this which we all know that he is because he bought a strike it <laughs> he bought a strike it. he bought a copyright strike it let's be honest lord knows that apparently he needs the coin because apparently he's super poor guys he's super poor so if you want to take my 50 cents that i make off this video go ahead and take it enjoy i guess but since james keeps having so much trouble with dating i am here to give him a lesson or two now in this article i talked about how james approaches dating very differently than the average person such as using his tick talk for you page to flirt with people hmm i wonder why his relationships aren't working out like literally what i have never heard of anyone who does that and i think with anyone who has even two brain cells which is one more than what i have would know that that would a hundred percent end so disastrous first of all because people online are crazy and you never know what their intentions are second because so many people lie about how they look like who they are what they do like dating online in general is already kind of hard imagine putting yourself out there on your tiktok for you page so people can flirt with you like i just i don't understand why mr charles would think that that's a good idea or that that would possibly lead to his forever husband or girlfriend or whatever there are so many people who go on you know grinder christian mingle Craigslist, or whatever and they find their forever sweetheart however those approaches will not work for someone like james charles and let me tell you why he himself has stated that he he has had a lot of trouble dating because he is a social media influencer so he doesn't know what to do and people only talk to him for clout so he finds that a lot of people lie to him about their age or whatever so he's even gone as far to have people show him their ids so that he can evade that type of stuff i really genuinely feel like if you're going that far to not get into another scandal first of all you've probably done that way too many damn times to be going that far second of all it could be possible that social media dating just is not 
for you. And in James Charles case, it's not for him because people all on social media know who he is. Like I said, for regular schmegular people, online dating, it's not that it doesn't work because thousands and thousands of people every single year find their forever sweetheart, have really good things come out of online dating and everything. People even find forever best friends. I'm not anti-online dating, but the reason why it works for people who are regular is because they're not famous. <laughs> they're not easily recognizable. They're just regular Joe Schmoes, you know what I mean? So James Charles taking this approach as if he also is a regular schmegular person whose presence isn't mostly online is also delusional to me. Obviously he's allowed to do whatever the hell he wants. Like he's allowed to go online and find people to talk to or whatever as long as they're his age. But clearly it's not working out for him. Like in the article it even said that he recently, 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 not two years ago, not a year ago, recently caught another minor lying to him about their age when flirting. And I'm just like, boy, you just gotta switch it up. Clearly this... <laughs> Clearly this method isn't working. You need to switch it up. It might just be that you are gonna have to have the type of love story where you go to a coffee shop or you go to a library or you join a club or something like that and meet someone in real life who is of your age and talk to them and meet them like that. And here's the thing. Yes, James Charles is like, he famous, right? He famous. Here's another thing to consider. If James is like, well, real life doesn't work either because everyone knows me. Bro, you live in LA of course everyone knows you and if he's so desperate as he says to find a partner so desperately and he's so desperate for love then you would go the extra mile and even probably go out of town get out of LA go live somewhere else where not as many people know you find love in a small little beach town like hello you have the money to do it which would be extreme for again like everyday people but everyday people also like visit Japan visit Mexico and they have like summer flings with people that also maybe eventually evolve into real full-fledged relationships so it's not that far off from what regular people actually do and again i want you guys to keep in mind james has said that he has resorted to talking to minors because he is desperate for love if you are that desperate then going out of town getting out of la getting rid of your damn phone and those dating apps and trying to advertise yourself on the tiktoks for you page which is wild to me it should not be that big of a suggestion or that drastic of a suggestion to say that you should probably just drive like five hours out stay there for a bit and and just see who you meet see who you meet join a club join a college course like be normal you know what i mean <coughs> excuse me like dating now in days i feel like people make it way harder than it actually has to be again i am very biased when it comes to dating because i didn't really date before my husband and, and my husband and i got married pre pandemic and i've said before i feel like the dating scene has definitely changed post pandemic so y'all can call me out if you want but from what i have heard dating nowadays sounds horrible like my heart goes out to the single people nowadays who are looking for love like like from the stuff that i hear some of y'all are not even in relationships like some of y'all are straight up prisoners tell me why i ran into a tiktok the other day that was talking about how this girl was paying this guy's rent and then this dude was using that rent money to use on the girl that he was cheating on her with and she knew and was still paying his rent i guys blink twice if you need help because i am on my way you should not be letting anyone do you that dirty that is crazy to me and also i'd be talking to some of my friends and they're like yeah i can't believe you followed this girl on instagram so i slashed his tires i'm just like i am so sorry guys i am so sorry i am so sorry i i look i get it i can sympathize with the struggle some of you guys are out here staying with the most rancid men the most toxic men and you guys are doing the lord's work by trying to be like i can change him i can change him girl is he wearing a diaper is he wearing a diaper what do you mean change him let him be dookie let him be dookie on his own with that being said i understand how nowadays it might be harder for people to date because i just feel like humans in general have gotten worse throughout the years but i promise you guys really good people exist good men exist good they thems exist good women exist people who are loyal and romantic and kind exist now here's the thing about obtaining someone like that you're gonna have to work a little bit harder to find it but when you do find that 
that love, it'll be so worth it. So the one thing that I would suggest for James Charles, if dating apps isn't working, then it's probably because you just have to try things the old fashioned way. Try everything. Don't just stick to one thing like James Charles, because clearly it's not working out for him. And James, if you're watching this, if you want me to delete this video, then send me money. If not, then sit down and listen. Clearly what you are doing is not working. You keep running into the same situation over and over again. The fastest way you can drive yourself to being miserable is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results, okay? And that is what you're doing. And again, y'all, we are not talking about someone who lacks resources. He can definitely hire a love coach. He can throw his own mini party for singles to mingle at that are his age that are also in the same profession or whatever. And he could easily find someone within his age. But it always seems like there's some sort of excuse that he has as to why he's so desperate and why he resorts to that. Because even in this article, he talked about how no one can name a list of five or more gay 24 to 25 year olds that are famous. Um, do you live under a rock? First of all, the first one that immediately comes to mind is not only someone who is also part of the LGBT community, but he is also someone who does makeup and he's also 24. Hello, Bretman Rock. Hmm, who's another person? Um, hello, Lil Nas X. Troy Savan, hello. The fact that James is so convinced that he's the only person that has ever been on this universe to be famous, 24 and gay, I can't. There's so many LGBTQ young people now. There are actors, artists, like even YouTubers. And this fool really convinced that he is the only one. This is more proof that this dude, Mr. Charles, needs to get the hell offline and expand his horizons and his mind that not everything is social media and that there are people who exist outside of the existence of being filmed in front of a camera. Go outside and touch grass. Like, you can easily step out of your door. You can easily step out from your mansion. But at this point, it's a choice to remain stagnant. Final part, why James Charles is going to be perfectly fine. When rich people resort to hiring PR teams or hiring lawyers or whatever, it makes no sense to me because the cheapest thing that you can do, that's free actually, is apologizing. And for some reason, these influencers out here, these celebrities out here who constantly abuse their power don't want to do that. And the thing that's kind of hard about people in power like Colleen Ballinger and like James Charles is that they're most likely never going to ever feel real life consequences to what they've done. So they can't even feel empathy. They don't understand the heaviness of what they've done because they're so detached from real life consequences because of their privilege and power and money that they can't even fathom why or how someone could constantly be talking about them and what they've done to the victims and all of that stuff. And he himself acknowledges it in the article by even calling the word a buzzword. I really don't like the whole weird narrative that a lot of people give into of the whole it's trendy for victims to come out now. It's trendy for people to accuse other people of grooming. It's like, is it trendy or is it the fact that it was a ripple effect where someone was brave enough to come out with their story, which then inspired another person, which then inspired another person, which then created this movement that, by the way, should have always been a thing where victims are now comfortable enough to speak what happened to them and now our culture is shifting where we believe in victims and to say that grooming is this buzzword or this trend is so ridiculous to me. Victims coming out with their story is not some sort of cute little TikTok challenge like what? It's very much real and the only reason why you're calling it a buzzword and getting upset about it is because it's against you because it doesn't benefit you. Now if no one was accusing you of anything you would be totally fine with this movement but because it does affect you you're not oh all of a sudden it's a trend it's a buzzword like come on now again that's why it did not surprise me that james charles was over here defending colleen ballinger birds of a feather stick together and let me tell you i am not shocked that cosmopolitan made that article about james charles either because people in power protect other people in power that's just how it is it's unfortunate um it's very unfortunate because that is how the abuse of power and the cycle of the abuse of power continues that's why it's so hard for not only for people like that to face consequences not only because of their power and privilege 
privilege and status right but because other people in power back up other people in power who are currently being dragged for example james trying to protect colleen but guys this is why it's so important to have these conversations with one another this is why it's so important for other creators to use their platforms to talk about things like this so that they don't get swept under the rug because unfortunately in our society even though we're coming to a point where victims voices unfortunately you guys have seen time and time again that big creators or influencers or celebrities that are victims of cancel culture when reality it's just they're facing the consequences to their own actions unfortunately we do live in a society currently where the predators abusers and people who use their power over people they're the ones who reap more of the benefits unfortunately and they get more opportunities they end up getting more lights and attentions to their name but the way that we can combat that is first of all not supporting the people who are being accused of all these things right but also do not give your money <laughs> do not give your money to these people i can't stop you from buying james james's palette but just know that your views and as an audience member you have so much power in choosing who gets support and who doesn't who gets to be heard who doesn't just always choose wisely the internet is a microcosm of the real world and you should definitely not tolerate that type of behavior from someone who isn't an influencer either and is close to you don't let people out here like james charles give you these lame ass excuses or convince you that they're the victims don't don't give in to any of that stuff Stuff. unfortunately at the end of the day i do believe james is going to be perfectly fine because again we live in a culture that just unfortunately somehow values the people in power a lot more i don't get the people defending him i will never understand why people tend to go so ham and hard for people like colleen and stuff like that defending her and defending people in power as if they themselves pay their bills like no <laughs> Even if James or Colleen or people in power are victims of cancel culture, they end up being completely fine within like five months. And it makes me kind of feel weird knowing that society will probably move on from also the Colleen Ballinger situation because everyone just values the people in power way more than the victims' voices. So I'm just here to tell you guys, you know, we have the ability to break that chain. The less we pay attention to people in power who abuse that power and the more we put our focus into the things that actually matter. All right, guys, that is basically it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys want more videos like this, go ahead, like, and subscribe because I go live every Sunday with a new video and a new topic. If there's a specific topic that you guys want me to talk about, go ahead and comment down in the comments below. And as always, I know there'll be some people who are, you know, going to disagree with the stuff that I said in this video or want to put in their own two cents. You can go ahead and do that. You're allowed to disagree with me. Just, you know, keep it cute, keep it cordial in the comment section. If you did watch this entire video in its entirety, make sure to comment down a duck emoji down below so I know that you guys watch this entire thing remember to follow me on instagram as well as tiktok oh ow just hurt myself <laughs> as well as tiktok and you guys know the drill before i end any of my videos before i end this video you guys know i always give you guys homework and that is just for you guys to enjoy the rest of your day eat your favorite comfort meal snuggle with your dog go to the gym drink some strange green water whatever it is today that you do just make it count all right guys that is it for today's video i love you guys so much and i will see you in the next video bye
sure that I'm trying to keep you. Yeah. All these memories bittersweet, yeah. Gotta move, can't stay here no more. 여기 계속 있다가 나만 손에 가대. Cause we can't keep making these rain clouds stay overhead. Don't wanna keep this going. Can't fix what's already broken. Yeah. 생각을 노리게 한번.